All right, hello everyone. You're listening to Lipstick and Leather, and with me is right now in California is Michael Starr. How's the day going, Michael? So far, it's pretty good. I just ran into a chick I met in Germany, and I brought her backstage with you guys, and I'm getting ready to fuck her. <laughs> right on, right on. All right, the UK Def Leppard Motley Crue tour was a choice between you guys and 6 a.m. How did Steel Panther get the bill as opposed to 6 a.m.? Uh, I think Nikki decided to use us instead, and I think it was actually it was Tommy's decision to have us actually, and Nikki wanted to have 6 a.m., but Tommy really wanted us to do it, so that's what happened. Very, very cool. All right, now 25 songs were recorded for the last album. Song titles such as That's Not My Finger, That's My Cock, Smells Like Number Two, Raping Your Ear Holes with Four Tiny Weenies, Sloppy Seconds, Tongue Punch in the Fart Box. What's going to happen with those songs down the road? Th- those songs were never written. Those were just like, like ideas that we had. So we'll probably like explore those down the road. I've been writing a lot because Satchel's had a writing block lately, so I've been like taking on the writing part. And Lexi's been writing a lot too. He he wrote like 15 songs, just like ideas for songs, like names. Right. So the first name he had was the, and he's like working on the rest of it. <laughs> right on, right on. Now, can we expect a song called Steel Panther down the road? Uh, we had one in the box, but we decided not to do it this time around. Hopefully, we'll see what happens in the next little while. All right. What about any more spelling songs in the future, like I Want Pussy and Gold Digging Horror? Uh, that's a really good question. I think we're going to actually start playing I Want Pussy live. Really? Yeah, because it was, uh, a, B, it was a B-side to uh, community property in uh, the UK. That's right. That's so right. we're thinking about maybe like start, start playing it again and shit. And, and uh, I don't know. We haven't really started doing any writing for the next record yet. I mean, Satchel's been writing riffs and stuff and ideas and stuff, but... Um, he hasn't really there's a few of them but I mean we're gonna start as soon as we get a break cause we're like really working hard man we get one week off after the show for the first time in about almost a year wow Rainbows and Witches and In the Future sound similar with the robot voices was this intentional? Satchel was Rainbows and Wizards with the robot voice was In the Future was there a reason why it sounded like a robot too? It was a real robot. It was a real robot. Fair enough. We then had Dane Cook overdub his voice underneath the real robot. And he mimicked it perfectly. So it sounds like Dane Cook. Absolutely. Like it was a real robot. We went to uh, uh, Cal Poly. You know where Cal Poly is? It's here in California. Okay. Cal Poly Tech. Back here. And uh, they have real robot makers. I guess a robot that would say those exact words. Those are fucking nice underwear right there. <laughs> All right. No. Those are fucking awesome, dude. You gotta save these. Save me a pair. I want to put them on. You should wear those on stage tonight. Fucking. Right. Don't you think? I'll tell totally you. I dig that kisser too, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Love kiss. All right, now Comedy Central was supposed to pick up a show based on the life of Steel Panther. I know you guys did a pilot for it. Tons of cash was spent on it, but where's the show? Is it gonna? They they passed. Really? Yeah, they uh, decided not to go with it for some reason. And we found out when we landed after the plane download. Oh, that's a drag. Yeah, we were all bummed. But then we realized it's a good thing because uh, we really want to do something where we're not restricted <laughs> verbally. Right, right. And Comedy Central uh, was kind of like telling us what we could do and what we couldn't do. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that we've like, we, we were almost going to surrender to it and do it. You know, but they actually did it for us. They, they passed for us. So, you know, in retrospect, we're kind of stoked because now we're like right our own ship we're doing what we want to do Absolutely. plus uh, with the deal with them they owned a lot of it yeah so Absolutely. All right. With Paul Geary managing Steel Panther, was he involved in getting Nuno to guest star on It Won't Suck Itself? No. As a matter of fact, him and Nuno got in a fight over it because Paul didn't want Nuno to be on it. He was jealous because he wanted to be on it. It was really uncomfortable. Um, I actually, Satchel's the one who got Nuno on it. He actually just asked him straight up, hey, you want to play on a record? And he goes, I don't, I would, but Paul will be pissed. Right. And, you know, I think they might have an extreme reunion coming down the road. So I don't know, like, if that effect affected it but at the same time it's like you know everybody's happy now you know mm-hmm. and Paul realized that he's just he can't outplay sticks so fair enough 
yeah. we, 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 we were going to let him play tamarine on it, but he even does that all the time. <laughs> Any chance of recording a cover album with, that would include the versions of Fantasy and I want it that way down the road? No. Right now, Ryan, we're trying to, like, not necessarily separate ourselves, but we're, like, growing as an original act and it feels really good because mm-hmm. we've been playing covers for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and it's funny because the label's been pushing us to do that and everyone's always suggested But at the same time, when we go out and play an original show, it feels like we've you know accomplished something so we want to continue I, i'm not not gonna say never mm-hmm. maybe down the road we'll do it yeah because i i mean what's the cool thing about coming to do the residencies is that we get a chance to like play those covers again and it's, Absolutely. it's fun you know Absolutely. and that, that those are our roots and that's what really made steel panther what we are today for sure so we're not ignoring it it's just that we're just excited about original stuff right now absolutely when i saw you guys november 4th that was the first show you guys ever did no covers just straight ahead original music yeah and it's scary i think it's killer. Yeah, we're, we're excited about it. Definitely keep it up. I don't like green. I'm not an Irish. Lucky for us, I am not either. What are you? English. Looking all trim, dude. What's up? For real? Yeah. Look at the gym. Wow. And I've been eating good. Wow. I haven't. I've been eating cookies and. Oh, really? Fucking buttery pasta with garlic and chicken and butter. Ooh, thicky, thick sauce. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Chicks dig that. No. More cushion for the pushing, dude. Now, there was talks of Joe Elliott, Scotty Ann, Gene Simmons, and Stephen Percy to appear on Balls Out. What happened with that? Stephen Percy wanted money. Gene Simmons wanted money. Paul Stanley can't sing that well. <laughs> Whoa. Um, whoa, 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 he's up, You're he's not going to print that, are you? You can't print that. <laughs> print that. No, Paul just, Paul was like, that was like a wish list thing that never happened. But Gene right. wanted money, we <laughs> fuck that. Yeah. And so did Piercy, he wanted 500 bucks, but. Hey, you guys did the roast, that was cool. He said he would have done it for about 50, we didn't have about 50. <laughs> Like he said a buck fifty, huh? Yeah, but me and Pierce we're gonna write a song together. Cool. Yeah. Not, uh, that's not one dollar fifty cents. We are. Any chance of ever recording a studio version of Hoobah Stanks The Reason, which you guys kill when you guys do it live? No. No. I lo- no. Nope. Do you know that our manager manages Hoobah Stank too? Okay, no, I didn't know that. So every time we rip on Hoobah Stank, he's like, come on, guys, give me a break, all right? <laughs> one break. Coming up. And I say, one break, coming up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the private party you guys played for, Dexter, of, off- of The Offspring. How'd you know about that? <laughs> wow, that was years and years and years ago. Yeah, Dexter... Uh, Wait, do we do a party? No, we don't play for Dexter's party. No, it wasn't for Dexter's party. Oh, okay. Well, it wasn't his birthday party. What it was was a party. Satchel and I were the only ones who did it. Six didn't do it. And he invited us to come down and jam at his party, and it was Davey Havocs from AFI's birthday. Right. So what we did is we learned one of AFI's tunes from their earlier records and played it and had Davey, but we rocked it out and made it metal. Nice. And so Davey was like, oh, my God. It was, it was fun. Right on. Now, is that how you guys got involved? How you got involved in singing background vocals on Sing the Sorrow. Yep. And, and also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, exactly. Davey and I became friends and uh, the rest is history. Right on. But we never slept together. <laughs> I mean, we slept together, but nothing happened. Now, what about the song, I Really Want to Rock With You? Of course, you guys did on Inked and a couple of times on the DVD. That turned into If You Really, Really Love Me. Right. How'd you know? I've heard the, I've heard the, well, I have the middle school, it's on the middle shop, middle school, see? Yeah. It's cool, it's a cool tune. And the DVD. Yeah, that's right, I made it on DVD. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be cool to hear a full version of that song, maybe down the road. Oh, I really, really want to rock with you? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Now, were you guys influenced at all by Scrap Metal Sensitive album? Who's that? It's kind no, of. No, because I don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a fictionist album in the late 80s that it's rumored that Joel and Turner sang on some of it, David Coverdale, John Bon Jovi. It's never been revealed who's actually on the album. Really? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, what's it called? Scrap Metal? Scrap Metal, and the album is called Sensitive. Wow, no. Gotta check it out. It's good, really, uh, really interesting stuff. Now, how did you get involved in singing three songs background vocals on Poison's Crack a Smile? How'd you hear about that? God damn, you do some research. <laughs> well, uh, Brett and I have been friends for a long time. 
and uh, we were spending Christmas together, and he uh, asked me if I wanted to sing on a record. And I said, yeah. And I went down to the studio called Devonshire Studios where they're recording a record. And I, my very first job when I moved to Hollywood was working at that studio. Okay. So I remember I, I felt like I walked in, I walked past the reception area where I worked, and I was like, I don't work here anymore and I'm going in to sing on Poison's record. This is fucking <laughs> rad, you know? And he paid me cash right there. He gave me like 700 bucks or something to sing three songs. Nice. nice. And I'd sing like... And he would like, I remember we were in the studio and he goes, okay, this is the part you want to sing. And I go, well, just sing it for me. He goes, no, I'm not a good singer. I go, yeah, you are. Come on, dude. And he sang it for me and we sang together and it was cool. Now you're uncredited and you're not even thanked in the liner notes on Crack a Smile. Which three songs was it that you did background vocals on? I honestly, I have no idea. I don't even remember. Interesting. I really dig the tracks Back Off and Give It that you wrote with Doug Aldrich. Terrific tunes. Do you write any more of Doug and will those songs ever be released sometime down the road? Well, Satchel and I got in a fight because I, I wrote this riff and he didn't want to use it and it just fucking pissed me off. So uh, I showed it to this guy, Doug, when we were partying and he's like, fuck, that's rad. And so we recorded it and and then it created more problems between him and I, so we just kind of stopped. Gotcha, gotcha. He's very sensitive. <laughs> With yourself and Bart Walsh being in countless original bands, did you ever write any material together? Yeah, we wrote a lot together. Okay. Um, but nothing ever came of it for some reason. Just, you know, it's, there's been so many guys I've got together and, like, we've written songs together and recorded them and, like, for some reason, it's like when you meet a girl and right. you, like, you get together with her, it's fun and it lasts for two weeks and it's done. Mm-hmm. But with music, it's it's imprinted forever and people know about it, you know? But nothing ever got out or shopped or anything and it's not like when him and I started writing together, you know? Yeah, That's yeah. like, it's like, it's I'll relate to a girl when you meet the girl you're supposed to be with then you're always with them you know right. and sometimes you break up and you end up getting back together and that's Tim and I have like we've been together for a lot longer than, than you even know mm-hmm. that's cool now Rick Brody was originally supposed to produce 7% Solution your project of course with McPerry for Polygram why didn't this happen? Uh, God, we got a production deal and then it went away okay yeah like it was largely due to cocaine I started doing a lot of partying mm-hmm. a lot of cocaine and Mitch did a lot of cocaine so him and I started hanging out and doing that relationship thing I'm talking about yeah 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 and uh, he was like pissed at me for doing blow and we kind of just separated for a while and thankfully it never happened right right and he goes, it's like it's like I've stuck my tip in with a lot of guitar players mm-hmm. but the guy I always do deep penetration with is Satchel <laughs> gotcha any good stories opening for Bullet Boys in 7% Solution? You're funny. Bullet Boys? Yeah, you guys did a what? couple shows in L.A., I believe three. God damn, dude. I think you mentioned you were up all night for three nights. Oh, God, yeah. That's another thing. <laughs> I remember meeting Mark Turin for the first time. That was fun. He's supposed to be an interesting character. Yeah, I did a show with him when he was in King Cobra, too. Oh, wow, really? Him, yeah, in one of my very first bands oh, that no, I was in. No kidding, that's got to be cool. Yeah. Any chance of ever releasing or re-recording the Ellie Guns and release songs Heaven Is In Hell and Forever that I love and should have been on the Wasted EP or a full-length album after? No, I'm, uh, that, you know, like I said, it was just a passing phase, one of my bad days. Cool tunes, though. Yeah, they're cool. How'd you hear those? I've had copies for ages. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, man. That was on my 8-track. What happened is Tracy sent me some music. Because my this girl I was dating was best friends with his girlfriend. Okay. And so that's how we started. I started seeing... My girlfriend at the time was an actress, so she'd go on auditions. And Tracy's girlfriend was an actor, and we'd all run into each other at auditions. And then we just started, like, exchanging music and stuff. And that's how that happened. Right on. Now, if I remember right in L.A. Guns, you re-recorded the songs What I've Become and Hugs and Needles for Sony for Mr. John Kalodner. Yeah. Were you guys just shopping a deal re-recording those tunes from American Hardcore? No, what happened was uh, they fired their singer and they asked me to fill in for him while I was on break from Steel Panther. Huh? How's that? (laughs) 
And that's really what happened, though. Right. And then Kalodner goes, oh, I'm going to sign you guys. So I stayed in the band for a little while longer and nothing happened. There was talks of you guys being signed to Portrait Records that so they were interested. Yeah, totally. That would have been cool. There was talks of the Atomic Punks to record an album of unreleased Van Halen songs that never made any albums. Did yeah. anything ever come off the ground with that? No, Eddie wouldn't let us do it. No, eh? That's all that's oh, that's a pain in the ass. And now I know why. 